Comment on the future of Senate Bill 14 and what this means for victims is Shane Harris. He's the president of the People's Association of Justice Associates Group. Uh, Shane, great to see you. Thanks for coming by. People's Association of Justice Advocates. Advocates. Yes. Right, right, right. Um, always good to see you. Good to see you too. Y you grew up in the foster care system, mm -hmm. and we learned earlier that 60% of those foster care youths um, are trafficked, according to the FBI. I know this hits home to you. Uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit why this is so important. Right here in San Diego County, I spent 13 years in this foster care system after the loss of both of my parents. I emancipated in 2010, was dropped off downtown with a bag of clothes and an emancipation letter. Mm. I went through eight different placements while in foster care. I saw so many kids being trafficked, young girls and, and even teen boys, uh, who were in the system with me who went through this, some of this stuff, because we are among the most vulnerable. And per FBI statistics, 60% of foster youth become, uh, are, are, are trafficked while they were children, per FBI statistics and studies. So this is a critical, critical issue, not just to the all children, but to a very vulnerable population within the child population that I often talk about here. Yeah, can you share some experiences, some friends who got trafficked, how they got out? I mean, how damaging that was? I, I can only imagine well, how horrible that you know, was. I remember um, one of them, uh, we were in a group home together and, and she was, uh, you know, messing around with, she's like, uh, she was about 15. She's messing around with an older pimp. Uh, yeah. He had to be in his 30s uh, and, you know, essentially, uh, when she wanted to, you know, get out of the situation, because she was trying to make some money, going through difficult times, and so she was trying to get out of the situation, and there were threats from both sides, threats from the side of the pimp and, you know, what he would do to her, um, and then there were threats from law enforcement, mm -hmm. right, that her fear that if she got out, what would happen to her, and could she get in trouble? Um, so, you know, many of these young victims get into this for money, uh, they're being sold something, they're being told that they're gonna have something, a pimp, an older man is usually using them and they wing them off to the next older man and then a couple of handlers here and there. And before you know it, they're in the ring of prostitution, in the ring of trafficking. They're mm. sent from city to city. They're sent from state to state and even country to country. My goodness. I mean, when you read the bill, you just think it's a no-brainer that somebody who does that to a minor should yeah. have a stricter penalty. What are you seeing the holdups are? Uh, why isn't everybody on board with this so easily? And what are some of the hurdles that you think might come down the line for this to actually become a law? Well, as you said yesterday, this was in the California uh, Public Safety Committee. And the Public Safety Committee voted it down and killed it. Uh, many of us spoke up. The governor, Newsom, <laughs> he doesn't come out much on, on issues regarding legislature. Yeah. But he came out and said, I don't understand why this got caught up in the assembly. It passed through the Senate, bipartisan, Democrats and Republicans, unanimously saying this is the right move for California. Yeah. So what happens next? I, I think yeah. now that it has gone back to the Public Safety Committee, uh, in my perspective, through all the bureaucratic uh, games that were being played this morning in the Assembly, went back to the Public Safety Committee. Public Safety Committee has passed it through. It now goes to the Appropriations Committee and will go to other committees in the Assembly um, and then get to the floor of the Assembly. Now, one of the concerns, Logan, that, that, that is there is the three strikes law. Uh, there are some Democrats who want the three strikes clause removed from this, which makes trafficking, includes that under the three strikes statute in our state. I believe it should be. For repeat offenders who continue to perpet perpetuate our children, they deserve to pay the price. They deserve to go to prison forever if they continue to hurt and perpetrate our children. Yeah. So there's a big concern there. And then the, the last thing I'll say, Logan, is there's a big concern uh, along the, the, the lines of whether this will hurt victims uh, who are also offenders. There are some victims who end up also being offenders. Yeah. I think the thing that we have to think very clearly about is this. There's a line. You're either a victim or you're an offender. If you're both Yes, there's blurred lines here, and I hope that we will look at a strategic route to ensure we're protecting victims. Yeah. However, we cannot protect suspects and criminals. We need to put them away if they continue to hurt our children, and that is the stance here, is that too many of our vulnerable children are at stake, yeah. and it's up to the legislature and to the state of California to put an end to this, and one of the ways to send a strong message to criminals who perpetuate children yeah. is let them know 
the three strikes will be on you if you keep perpetuating our children. Shane Harris, we got to leave it there. Thank, Thank you, my you. friend. Thanks Absolutely. for